what is the origin of the disease that is killing this deer by turning its brain into something resembling Swiss cheese? Most likely, it's the result of inadequate safety precautions at a government research facility in Colorado. Chronic wasting disease has the potential to decimate the deer population and jump to the human population. This is one result from a text mining project I've been conducting related to deer management since 2010, and all of my results are available at my website, deerfriendly.com. So I've recently published a paper using this information on the origin of chronic waste and disease. It's uploaded the conference website. And here's the major output of that paper. It's a contact tracing for the first 40 years of the disease, and it supports the leading theory that the, the disease began when deer were kept in pens shared by sheep at a Fort Collins research facility in the 1960s. Uh, reportedly, some of these sheep were from a scrapie project. The facility was then run by Colorado State University and the Colorado Division of Wildlife. So let's talk about how I got this information. First of all, chronic waste and disease, what is it? It's 100% fatal disease of deer. It's infected 27 states, at least at this point, and three Canadian provinces. Regions near the origin are always already showing population declines. One area has a 98% infection rate. It's a prion disease. It's a misfolded protein. It's similar to mad cow or more importantly, scrapie in sheep. Lab research supports an origin of scrapie in sheep. That The theory is that it jumped to deer from sheep. It's very hard to destroy because it's a protein. It moves into the soil and comes up through the vegetation so forest fires, forest fires are considered as a way of getting rid of it, but that might not be adequate. Also laboratory research using transgenic mice show it can cross the species barrier into humans. And folks have been looking for that information for a while. So here's one piece of information that I did as a preliminary type of uh, text mining. Let me show you how that works. If you type into Google search, origin of chronic waste and disease, here you come up with 5.3 million results. Now, if you've ever gone to the end of the results for Google search, you actually only get about the first thousand results. So that means most of these results are not available from this search and are very difficult to find. So we'll talk about how we got some of that information. But if we look at this, you can see kind of a, a snapshot and that's what the graph analyzes. What do you see in these searches? Well, here's the first, uh, non-advertised result. It's from uh, Texas A&M University, and it says the precise location and mode of chronic waste and disease is not known. Uh, so now if you go down to my site, uh, Dear Friendly, uh, here's my site. So I talk about the, here's the map that I've been talking about. And I talk about the uh, Fort Collins origination theory. Uh, on this page, I have my research papers, documents the, how this done, was done. And here's some examples of the references I used. Now, for each state, I have information related to disease. So let's take a look at Colorado, where the disease uh, was first identified. So we have some archives of information. So here's an archive of disease information. Lots of, lots of links here uh, related to uh, development of disease, various kinds of diseases in Colorado. And if we go back to the main page here, we have some population data. And down here, we have the uh, little narrative of how chronic, chronic waste and disease, disease developed in Colorado. And we have links to all the, the key sources uh, for uh, the discussion of how that disease developed in Colorado. And we have this for all of the states. So if we go back to the analysis, when we looked at this, uh, collection from the Google search that was available, we noticed this trend that non-governmental sources, primarily news agencies, about a third of those report the Fort Collins theory. And some of them report them with strong advocacy. Uh, almost two thirds report that it's unknown. And then there's a few other theories floating around. Now, government reports uh, much lower in terms of the Fort Collins. So we actually in this search only found one government report mentioning the Fort Collins theory, and that was mentioned in a very dismissive kind of way. So I'm not getting much information about that theory from governmental sources. 
So how do we collect the information that we can't get from that simple Google search? So we use some text mining procedures, but we've done them daily since 2010. So as things pop up on the internet, we try to collect them. And the main tool is something called Google Alerts. So you put in keywords and it will send uh, whatever it can find on the internet that during whatever period. So we do this on a daily basis. So for example, here's a, a Louisiana deer was a keyword and you can see three men are charged with chronic wasting disease. They've done things to encourage illegally, uh, would encourage the distribution of chronic wasting disease in uh, Louisiana. And then we also do uh, Google alerts and Bing alerts also on a daily basis because Bing picks up some stuff that Google misses. So here's a few of the important results I've gotten. So related to how difficult it is to get rid of Madison.com, a captive herd with chronic wasting had been killed in Colorado. The land had been burned, tilled, poisoned, and left fallow for years. When a new herd was put into the enclosure, they contracted chronic wasting from the land, right? So what penetrates into the soil can come back up into the vegetation. Uh, here's an article similar to a few other articles. This article is from the Wall Street Journal. This basically inspired the, the research for this paper. It says early on, every case of chronic wasting could be traced back to the front range experimental station in Fort Collins. Now, I could never find anybody who actually showed that trace back, and that's what that map is. So I actually did conduct that trace back, and the map does support this assertion that they can be traced back to Fort Collins. Infected subjects were unwittingly sent to other states and then released into wild populations. Although it was an accident, it's still noteworthy that wildlife agencies tasked to protect deer unleashed the worst deer epidemic in history. Now, there was a paper published by government scientists from Fort Collins and from the Wyoming facility that they shared deer with, arguing why the disease didn't start there. And the main argument was the geographical epicenter was northwest to some extent of Fort Collins. Now, this is a 2007 USGA infection map. Here's Fort Collins. The dark areas are infections before the year 2000. So that's what the Fort Collins scientists have to look at, and they calculated the geographical center uh, up, up in this location. But you can see by 2007, uh, the range actually has increased down in this direction. And also, Fort Collins is on the northwest boundary of the Denver metropolitan area. So deer don't migrate down into this area. Also, their mountains here and, uh, uh, inhibits migration in this direction. So the actual epicenter is actually now much closer to Fort Collins. And we know from the records that they were taking fawns out of this area back into the facility uh, and then keeping them for a while and then releasing them back into this area for adult deer. So what the paper basically argued is even though they were releasing deer into what has become the epicenter and they didn't mention that they had kept uh, the deer in pens with sheep, although they acknowledged the sheep as a as the probable uh, origin of the disease, uh, sheep scrapies. They said it was probably brought in with fawns captured on the open range that may have encountered sheep. Well, we didn't actually see any, uh, we didn't identify at least any uh, chronic waste disease in the wild in Colorado until 1981, uh, 14 years after it was identified in the Fort Collins facility. So again, here's the map, and one of the hypotheses of the paper is testing this theory that the early cases can be traced back to Fort Collins, right? And so here's Fort Collins. There are 16 clusters from the first 40 years, 1967 to 2007. Here's Fort Collins. So they traded uh, uh, deer with a Wyoming facility where they picked up chronic wasting. They sent some deer to the Toronto Zoo where they picked up chronic wasting disease. And we can see how this expanded into some other areas where they were moving animals around. So that the quality of evidence is indicated here. The darkened areas are very solid areas, uh, evidence for the trace back. The gray areas show we have evidence tracing back to infected uh, areas linked to Fort Collins. And the whitish arrows are, white area arrows are explainable trace backs uh, with supporting evidence. So for example, uh, this elk herd in Montana, very poor record keeping. They were in trouble with the state wildlife agency on a regular basis. Apparently they had brought elk from the wild into their facility from the infected area. And they were trading all around with other uh, captive herds. Uh, they sent some of their 
elk into Nebraska and brought chronic wasting disease with them. So the map tends to support the theory uh, presented by the Wall Street Journal and other news organizations. In the uh, article, I have this summary of the documentation. Here's for this first six clusters. And you can see it shows when it was detected in the wild, when it was detected or observed in captivity, and then a summary of the information. And then the details again are, are on uh, my uh, page for each state on my website. Here's the current USGS map. And you can kind of see how this disease has been expanding. The dots represent captive game farms that either have been depopulated or have been infected, uh, depopulated because they have chronic wasting. You can see a lot of this is associated with the game farms. So what often will happen is a deer will be escaped from the game farms or the, uh, the people will dispose of dying or dead deer inappropriately, putting them out into the, uh, into the ter local terrain. And for example, down here, we have restocking from the infected area down into this area. And then we have hunters moving things around. And after 2007, it does get more difficult to track all the reasons for the distribution of the disease. So I'm providing uh, daily news and updates on the research and uh, at this location in my website, if you're interested in keeping up with this uh, huge, huge disaster. 